If you're gonna be a welder, you might have to weld in tight places like this. What's up? I'm Keegan and we're here at the Kentucky Welding Institute. Behind me are a couple of our simulators. And what a simulator here in welding school is something that you can put a piece of pipe or plate into that's going to mimic the real world experience. One of the simulators that we're going to be working on today is the convection box simulator. And all it does is make welding in a tight spot um, more common for the students here at the Kentucky Welding Institute. But this is a type of scenario that you can see out in the welding field, more specifically in heaters and refineries, but it's just a good way for students to get used to welding in tight places because as a welder, it's not all sunshine and rainbows when you're welding out in the industry. Sometimes you're gonna be in a hole in a ditch pipeline welding, sometimes you're gonna be up in a boiler tube welding, and then sometimes you may be in a heater or a pipe rack and the tight spots associated are what you may struggle if you don't practice them here in welding school. So I'm gonna go ahead and get in this simulator, show you guys how I would start to weld this and some of the problems that you might run into and how to fix those. So let's get to it. For this specific weld, uh, these tubes are flat stacked. Um, got my wire cut and already in your positions. Uh, a lot of guys will put their wire in specific spots just to make the weld easier. Um, but me, I'm not too particular and we're not trying to get this done right as you know as fast as we can. So anyways, I got this heavy hitter TIG rig here and then I got Rock Johnson's short cup set up on this. So it, it brings the cup in closer to the TIG torch making these welds super easy to get around through TIG rig. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on this right hand side. And again, this simulator makes it really hard to see what you're welding. A lot of the students are used to welding in a booth in the open. So when they get too comfortable, we pull them outside, pull them in these simulators to get them more acclimated to welding in the real world. So let's go ahead and get down here on the bottom. So in a lot of these welding spots, you're gonna have to kind of pre-plan the way that you do it. Um, and I've done this uh, specific convection box here at KWI before, so I kind of know the route to take and how to move my wire and things like that. So we're gonna go ahead and fire up here. be in situations where you have to make these welds in a tight spot. And at first it can be very nerve wracking um, if you haven't done it before. So that's why it's super important that you be doing these welds with someone who is experienced and you're with a company who knows that you're trying to learn and get better at it. Because the worst thing you can do is start in on something like this, mess up, cause somebody else some grief and struggle, and then you know, you're back to square one with someone else starting over what you had started and then messed up. All right, so we just got the bottom quarter done and hopefully it's not too bad. I was a little bit too hot with the 332 wire. A lot of guys like to use 332 wire when they make these kinds of welds because it's a little bit safer and it actually breaks down. You don't want to get rod chop and it go outside of the weld zone because then you could bust an x-ray or a phase ray depending on what they're going to be testing these welds as. So I'm going to go ahead and crank this thing down. All right, so now I got some wire and I'm going to go ahead and fire in here on the bottom again. So we're going to go up as far as we can and we're just moving along here nice and slow. We got that bottom quarter done. Again, it's, it's pretty tricky sometimes to weld in these positions. You're gonna stick your tongues in a lot and you're gonna mess up a ton. So that's why it's really important to be always challenging yourself and not always taking the easy way out. So let's go ahead, sharpen our tongues then because I stuck it and work on this other quarter. So whenever you're welding in these tight spaces, a lot of the tools that you're gonna make welds with are gonna be different than say your tools in the fab shop or out in the open. More like my welding mask here. This is a, a specialty hood. It's like a tight spaces hood. Um, it was made by my buddy Kirk. He did a really good job, put some Oakley uh, goggles into a, a flip lens here. And so he did a really good job with that. But again, he went over the, over the top for this welding hood. You can make these pretty simple at your house or if you have to, some guys, take cardboard and put their lens in the cardboard to make these welds. Another tool that you're gonna use a lot is obviously your TIG rig, so make sure you have like a, a good specialty TIG rig. What I mean by that is it can fit in tight places. So 
Um, this cup is from Rock Johnson. You can look him up on Facebook, and he makes these TIG cups that slide really close to the head of the TIG torch there, making it really easy to fit inside here on these types of welds. So, you know, the TIG rig does not get hung up whenever you're welding on the bottom or on the sides. Some other specialty tools that you're gonna need in these convection boxes is like a Milwaukee battery powered end grinder with a wafer disc on it. And so we'll, we'll throw a video on there because I don't have one. I just always use my weld partners on the job, so I never bought one. So thanks Pickle and a couple other guys out there that always have them for me. So also wire cutters, cut your wire and you know mirrors, obviously you wanna use some mirrors to your advantage here in these tight spaces. But other than that, um, you know, some companies do require fresh air, so you may have to wear a fresh air mask. You're just welding and letting your argon flow into the area because argon is heavier than air, and if you're down low in like a vessel or something, it can get to your brain and, uh, you know, be fatal. So that's why some companies or, you know, some jobs require fresh air. So imagine trying to weld this, and it's some kind of alloy that you have to purge. So you got to have, you got tape everywhere, and you're trying to feel, you know, if there's, gas coming out the pipe and then you got a suit on and then you got a mask with oxygen and then you got earbuds in because you're grinding and then you got a radio someone's with a radio in there talking so it can be pretty hectic making these welds sometimes but you know it pays really good so it just depends on what you're wanting to get into it depends on the limit of money that you can make in the welding industry we're going to go ahead and finish up the actually i'm probably going to jump back down here on this other quarter on the left hand side so i'm going to get set up for that the reason why it's important to either have someone with you if you've never done it before or just be really cautious making the wet, these welds is if you mess up it's a pain to fix them so uh, this one time when i first got into like welding in heaters and tight spaces um, you know i was welding with the crew and, and they were really experienced at welding in heaters and tight spaces and i wasn't experienced but i was able to go up there and learn from them and help and help them weld and it was you know my buddy tommy craven and uh wade sadler and uh, emilio and a couple other guys we were in st croix welding but anyways so i had welded with them and they helped me out and so they put me on a repair on another heater weld and it was it needed to be grinded out the top of the root needed to be grinded out and fixed and I accidentally uh, was, you know, it was, it, the x-ray was bad on the top of the weld. All you had to do was grind in it and, you know, repair it and cut it out, whatever. Well, the angle that the tube was, I couldn't, I couldn't tell. That because of the angle of the tube and the way I was looking at it, I couldn't tell that my grinder was off when I was cutting into it. So I cut into the pipe side of, the, you know, the tube, the 180 turn. And so cutting into the pipe means that it's not part of the, the pipe ends where you're actually supposed to make the weld. And so I cut into the pipe. My foreman came up there and he looked at me and he was like, dang, dude, you should have called me if you didn't know what to do. And I kind of knew what to do. It's just my angle was off, but I still should have got somebody. So we had to completely cut the turn off cut the wall of the heater out and make this repair in a really tight spot. And thankfully my buddy Tommy Craven was there to help me make that weld. It wasn't a fun time, but we made it happen. Uh, you know, we both had to help each other hold lights and mirrors and get in tight spots and weld. So, you know, if you're ever welding in a tight space, you don't know what to do, go grab somebody because the weld is in the tight space because of an engineer or whatever reason and you don't want to have to go back and do it again. So just make sure if you're doing a well in a, in a tight spot, do it once, do it right so that nobody else, including yourself, has to come back and fix it. All right guys, so we got the last quarter of this weld to go. Again, we're just putting the root in, showing you guys the technical aspect of these simulators and how it brings the real world feel right to your learning experience. Um, again, you wanna have the right TIG rigs for it with, with the shorter cap and that can move freely and you know flow argon without any issues. You also wanna make sure that 
you know, your, your TIG rig is hooked up, your, your ground is hooked up, everything's ready to go before you start in on these welds. Because the biggest thing is you don't want to get started, you have to go get something. You want to make sure your wire's up here, your argon's good, your machine's good, you got your remote, everything's set up before you make these welds. And that's going to make your whole experience a lot better. Again, I got a pad here that I'm kneeing on. You want to make sure that you're comfortable. If you're not comfortable, it's going to be miserable making these welds. But the more that you do it, the more that you get set up right, and the more that you practice these type of welds, it's gonna help you to make more money in the welding field. A big piece of advice that I was given was how you do anything is how you do everything. So making sure that your setup is right before you make these welds is gonna make it go a lot better. I've rushed these type of welds and I've done things when I didn't know what to do and it really screwed me and put me in a bad position as well as my superintendent and foremans and other people who I'm working with. So let's go ahead and wrap up the last bit of this type weld. So we just finished up welding on our convection box simulator or tight spot simulator. Again, make sure that you guys are setting yourself up for success by making sure that what you're doing is correct to the procedures that you're welding on and the people that you weld with. So if you like this video, go ahead in the comment section, let us know your hardest weld that you've ever made or a crazy tight spot welding video. We wanna hear them and we will reply back to you guys because we love welding and crazy stories like welding in these simulators because a lot of you guys know when you're welding in tight spaces with some buddies, it's really, really fun and can get hectic and is you know good and bad. So check out our website, kwi.us, for more info and also our social media platforms. Until next time, my name's Keegan, we'll catch you later.